Now, recently, a Bangladeshi publisher of secular books uh, was found literally hacked to death in the capital of Dhaka in the second attack of its kind during the weekend. Now, according to reports from the BBC, uh, Faisal Arifin Dipan, uh, 43, was killed at his office in the city center just hours after another publisher and two secular writers were injured in a similar attack. Now, who's taking the blame for this? Well, a local affiliate, uh, affiliate of Al-Qaeda has actually taken credit for these recent attacks. Now, of these attacks, and there have been multiple attacks of this type on secular bloggers since blogger Avijit Roy was killed in a similar way in February. Now, both publishers targeted on Saturday had actually published Roy's work. Now, earlier in that day, on Saturday, armed men had reportedly burst into the offices of publisher Amidur Rashid Tatul. Ran, uh, Ranadeep Basu was one of the three men injured in this attack on Saturday. They stabbed Mr. Tatil, according to the BBC, and two writers who were with him locked him in an office and fled the scene. Now, as I had mentioned, there weren't actually any fatalities in here, but uh, one of them is at least in critical condition. I'm not so sure of their uh, condition as of this point. Now, the two writers were named by police as Ranadeep Basu and Tariq Rahim. Now, Ansar al-Islam, which is Al-Qaeda's Bangladeshi affiliate, posted a message online saying that it had taken, uh, that it had carried out these attacks on Saturday. Now, Roy is actually a U.S. citizen of Bangladeshi origin, and he's actually also a critic of radical Islamism. Now, he was murdered in February by suspected Islamists. His wife and fellow blogger, Banya Ahmed, was also badly injured in the attack, and since three other bloggers have also been killed. As you can see, just from all of this, from this article, there's a huge problem in Bangladesh with Islamic fundamentalists uh, with ties to terrorist groups actually carrying out brutal attacks on secular bloggers. That's a big issue. That's a big issue. There's a little bit of a timeline here to make sense of all of this going on. Now, on the 27th of February, Avijit Roy, who I mentioned earlier, was attacked and killed while walking home from a book fair. And as I mentioned, his wife, Banya Ahmed, was also seriously injured. On the 30th of March, Washakir Rahman was also hacked to death with machetes near his home in Dhaka. On the 12th of May, blogger Anita Bijo or Ananta Bijoy Das attacked was a attacked and killed in Silet. I, I have problems with all of these names, so please bear with me here. On uh, on the 7th of August, blogger Niloy Neal was also hacked to death by a gang armed with machetes. That it's, it's amazing to see all this 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 barbaric violence going after secular bloggers. I mean, look, we atheists have uh, problems here in America, but nowhere near the problems we have in different parts of the world. Now, remember, in Saudi Arabia, they behead you for being an atheist, for apostasy, as well as witchcraft. There are a lot of places where there are still huge, huge problems for people who are atheists, not to mention people who are LGBT, or just not even of the local religion in that area. Big, big problems with fundamentalism, right? And here's the thing about fundamentalists. When you have to kill people that don't believe in your, your own warped interpretation of your specific religion or ideology, you have essentially admitted defeat. You, you say, my ideas do not stand up to question, to scrutiny, to facts, to logic. So instead, I'm going to kill you. Because I can't come up with a, a counter-argument. You've admitted defeat. That's it, you've lost. As soon as you resort to violence, you've lost. And it's the ultimate result of a failed ideology. Look, let's be honest. If they're God, if they're Allah, was so powerful, why does he need you to protect him? Why? It, it makes no sense, right? 
And why do you get offended if you're a, a Muslim or if you're a fundamentalist Christian? Why do you get so offended if you know you're right? Why does God get so offended if he knows he's right? I think, personally, it's because they're, they're not buying their own bullshit. There's so many hoops that you have to jump through in your mind, so many pretzels that you have to twist, so much cognitive dissonance when it comes to believing in some of the, the tenets of these fundamentalist religions that it warped your brain. You have to basically suspend all of your belief in reality, in facts, in order to believe some of this stuff. And I think a lot of these people, they're just not buying it, but they can't let it go. They can't let it go. But if you're a believer in God, Yahweh, or Allah, or whatever, right? Why do you get so offended if somebody doesn't actually believe the way that you do? Now, I'm not saying that most religious people do. Actually, most religious people don't. Most Christians, Jews, Muslims, they don't think like this. They don't agree with this. Anytime that there's any attack from any of the extremist groups within three of these religions, these Abrahamic religions, groups come out and say, hey, you know what, that was wrong. We oppose that. We oppose this fundamentalism. And I'm basically talking about fundamentalists here because they're the ones who are the real, real problem. These are the people that actually take this whole thing literal. With the seven-headed dragons and 72 virgins, these are the people that actually believe this stuff. Those are the people that are the problem because they use this as a justification, their entire ideology, to hurt people. And that's one thing you shouldn't be doing. That's why I think organized religion, some of the stuff they believe is bullshit. The whole, oh, these holy books, well, they're nothing more than glorified fiction. And that's something that they can't stand. And saying this, being in Bangladesh, probably get me hacked to death. And that's a sad realization. That even saying something like that, like, hey, I don't believe in your, bully, in, in your holy book because look at these contradictions. How dare you, blasphemer? You infidel. How can you believe in that kind of ideology? Now, that said, I don't think believing in something bigger than yourself is necessarily a bad thing. But when it comes to these religious books, remember these religious books were written at a time when people believed in sea dragons and fucking chimeras and dudes that walked on water and turned it into wine. It makes no sense. There's no reality. And that fact alone makes this something that's completely not worth killing another person over. But as I said, huge problem with fundamentalism in the world and Islamic fundamentalism and terrorism in places like Bangladesh. And of that, all I can do is to tell the secularists around the world, you know, that are just trying to educate people and introduce them to things like facts, logic, and reason. I gotta tell you guys, keep fighting up the good fight. You're doing what needs to be done. And don't give in to the terrorists. Don't give in to the fundamentalists and to the fear that these assholes that these groups like Al-Qaeda, that these terrorists are trying to spread.